Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. The Atheist Experience is live December 21st, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, Ashley Perrion, my Good. fine co host, as always. This show is sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. The ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning at Hot Jumbo Bagels, which is located uh, downtown at 307 West 5th Street between Guadalupe and Lavaca, except for the third Sunday now of every month when we will have our lecture series at the Austin History Center located at 9th and Guadalupe. Now, that is a new, that's a new thing coming up with the new year where we have moved our lecture series from the first Sunday of each month to the third Sunday of each month, although... I don't know that in January we're going to actually have... We don't, we don't have a speaker scheduled for January. We do not have a speaker for January. We have one for February. But we've got the room. We have the room. So they'll probably... We, have, we might just have a business meeting. Made noises just, about uh, that. Right. Something like that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, well, maybe we can get an update on you know just various things that yeah. the group has been trying to get going yeah. for the last year and, and have some discussion about that. Okay. So will we be... Since we've got the room, we'll be there on the third Sunday of January. I, take I would it. assume so. Yes. yes okay. Yes. All right. But uh, and we but we do have a speaker lined up for February. Yep. And uh, and so as soon as I find out who that is and what they're Isn't talking, it, uh, Dan Don Dan Dan Baker Don, Don Baker Don Baker. I thought he was March. <laughs> they're so confused here. I think he's in February. February. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay, might be Don Baker because so we we had talked about that. We're a speaker on the third Sunday of February. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's okay. been uh, it's well, you know, long ways to go yet till the third Sunday of February. So we're fine there. Anyway, um, so uh, other uh, weekly events that ACA gets involved in, we have of course Godless Gamers, which is a little recreational fun night uh, every Monday night, home of Russell and Virginia Glasser at 7 p.m. And of course ACA Happy Hour takes place every Thursday evening at uh, 7:30 p.m. at Antonio's Tex-Mex, which is near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. Now I have a sneaking suspicion that there won't be one this coming week. Uh, because there's a holiday happening of some sort. And uh, actually, it's a very big celebration this week. Apparently. A special birthday. Yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Sir Isaac Newton was born on December 25th, and he would have been 460 something or 30 something years old this wow. week. Yeah, this year. So, wow. Or 300 or uh, one of those. I think it's more like 300. Uh, okay. Well, he was, he was alive in the 1600s. This one here. So, uh, well, you know, what's uh, 100 years? What's 100 years? We're talking about 300, 400 years old. Guys. <laughs> so, um, so, happy birthday, Isaac, although you couldn't hear me. Um, well, that's so, uh, but every other Thursday, of course, that's happy hour. And uh, like I said, it starts about 7.30 in the evenings, but people tend to trickle in all evening long. So uh, just look for um, the, uh, you know, the very loud table of loud people. And uh, that'll be and with the signs, probably they'll yeah, some of those. Yeah. Ones, so, uh, and that'll be us. All right. Uh, the nonprofits are biweekly internet audio show, which is every other Saturday at two o'clock p.m. at the atheistnetwork.com website, which is a live MP3 stream. Most recent episode was just yesterday. The next one will be, of course, in two weeks from now. I think, unless there is some uh, interruption uh, involving people's holiday schedules, uh, January third uh, ought to be the next uh, nonprofits. And that is hosted by Jeff D. and Russell Glasser, as well as uh, anyone else who more or less turns up that day and uh, is invited on. And it's 90 minutes of uh, politics and news analysis and current events and just talking about how that relates to things. And um, on our website at the radio show page at atheist-community.org, uh, you can listen to about the last half dozen, seven or eight episodes uh, of the show. And that is an MP3 stream. And there is a live, uh, there's an interactive chat room feature that, of course, runs concurrently with the program if you listen to it through the atheistnetwork.com website. But on our site, there is a direct link to the live feed as well on the radio show page if you have trouble going through there. So it's all covered. You know, there's no possible yep. way you can miss that. <laughs> all right. Uh, last but not least are our pals at the University Atheists and Agnostics. Uh, our, um, you know, school's out. Hooray. And uh, I, so I suspect they'll be starting up their uh, spring semester uh, just here in a matter of weeks. And as soon as we know, of course, when those meetings are, if you are a registered UT student or faculty member um, and you want to know more about UAA, there's the URL for their website at the bottom of our uh, your monitor there. And um, usually they meet Friday afternoons, just uh, we, but uh, so that there's no reason to suspect that will change unless they can't get a room. But it's usually Friday afternoons and in some room somewhere on that big, vast campus. Uh, so, 
Uh, UAA is, you know, the first really successful uh, student organization uh, for uh, atheist and agnostic students, and so we're real proud of them. And uh, looking forward to uh, semester number four, right? That will be yes, starting up. Right. Yeah. So they're wrapping up their second year of existence, more or less. And, okay. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for uh, the day's announcements. Um, of course, if this is your first time watching the show, uh, this is the Atheist Experience. We've been on the air now for close to seven years. Actually, not really. Um, I did some looking around at, uh, at the website. Yeah. And I found that we premiered on October 17th, 1998. Or seven. Seven. Okay. So it'll be seven years in October. So, okay. So, so, it's, just so it's just over six. Just over six years. Okay. I thought I read somewhere, it must have been a mistake, that like they, uh, they had maybe done some tentative forays into doing a show as early as January of 97. But I could be wrong about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I was. I was looking over the newsletters. Yeah. The first newsletter that they have for 98 is like December. <clears throat> Okay. And they said, you know, we had a premiere of the show, and it went really well. And so okay. Good. All right. So, anyway, we have, so. six years. Okay. And um, uh, so we, uh, we, it's, a, it's a live call-in show. We're here to talk about, um, you know, we're, we're here to present the, uh, the one show in a, a week, you know, uh, in contrast to the, the five or six 24-hour-a-day networks that are out there putting out the religious message. We're here to uh, give the contrary view. And... Um, uh, we take calls uh, from callers, and uh, if this is your first time watching the show, though, uh, be aware that at our website, at atheist-community.org, we do have a fact page. We have a frequently asked questions page that we, uh, where we have assembled pretty much all the most common questions that we have gotten from callers uh, to our show over the six years that we've been live. <laughs> and uh, six, Sorry, maybe yeah. I'm being too picky. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're just doing... Uh, anyway, <laughs> but... Um, who knows? We may very well have already answered your question. If this is if you're a first time viewer, and uh, you think you might have some questions for us, um, check the fact page. That's where we just have all the basics covered. Um, but if not, we take phone calls on the show. Uh, although it always seems to work out to to where we never get around to absolutely everyone's call. By the end of the program, there's always at least two people hanging on the line. Don't get a chance to get in. And so uh, for for those folks uh, at home, or if you just don't want to call in but you still have some questions, we do have our viewer feedback address, TV uh, viewer feedback address, and uh, that is tv at atheist-community.org, our email for viewer feedback, and um, as for you, uh, write us questions, uh, you know, give us a piece of your mind, uh, let us know where we're screwing up, and uh, we will respond to you, and if it's a really good letter, we'll um, bring it on the air and read it on the air and, uh, and have some fun with it. And in a minute, I do have um, an email to discuss, uh, but I'm going to do that uh, later. Ashley, for now, is going to Go to the news. Okay. Uh, last announcement, I think. Um, our producer maybe ought to confirm this for me. But I do not think that we are having a show next week. No, we'll I was going to... Tape. Yeah, I was okay. going to mention that at the end. Okay. But we are... So, yeah. So, so, next, so we will be having a tape next week, but we're live this week and the week after. So, so Sunday to kick back and relax. Yes. Uh, okay, anyway. Um, news this week. Quite a bit of it, actually. Uh, first off, uh, Miami, Florida. The archdiocese down there has apologized for all the sexual misconduct and scandals and pedophilia and mm -hmm. cover-ups and transfers <laughs> and, uh, well, it goes on. Just um, a big mess, yeah. <laughs> the archdiocese of Miami said 38 of its priests have been accused of sexual misconduct involving minors since mm. the diocese was founded 45 years ago, releasing data on a report issued in all 110 of its parishes this weekend. Uh, Archbishop John Fav... Favolora. 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 Like. Okay. In a lengthy letter to members of the diocese, apologized for the sins of a few and also lauded the majority of the clergy, saying he is grateful for their good example. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as the chief shepherd of the archdiocese, express my most sincere apologies. I also apologize for any action or inaction on my part that has lessened your sense of trust in the Catholic Church and its ministers. I encourage those who are harmed in this way to seek the healing, reconciliation, and renewal that comes from counseling, prayer, and Christian hope. The report says 4,302 of the diocese, diocesan priests since 1958, or 99.1%, have never been accused of sexual misconduct involving minors. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's a good way to put a. a, a I, know, I love the positive spin well, on the face on it. Yeah, I mean, it's 99.1%. Of course, right? It was just a few small pairs of buttocks. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, but I was just going to of course, you know, everyone recognizes that, that, you know, what went on is not like. Is definitely not the rule. What everyone's doing. Of course. Right? But, it, but it is one of these things. It's, it's, 
what it is, it, the, the problem is that there, that it, it is, as this one bishop pointed out, it's, it's not just, not just the, the acts themselves, which are bad enough, right? And I don't know, how many of those 38 accusations have actually panned out into like it trials and convictions and people? Okay. Doesn't say. Uh, but let's face it, even one guy, I mean, something like that, that is enough to, you know, put a blot on the whole. Yeah, you know, shebang, and the real problem has to do also with the, you know, the betrayal of trust, right? Yeah, and you have these people in a position of authority, and with that authority comes a certain level of trust that people put in them. Yeah, you know, it would be, you know, and uh, and of course, just the added fact that they're priests who are supposed to represent, yeah, you know, the, the you know the moral authorities in in our you know, it's this is this has really been a big big body blow yeah. for the church. At least this uh, this bishop is doing something that it seems like it took forever for the Holy See to get around to doing. Yeah, you know, they um, yeah, and still you know, hasn't really done to any great extent. Yeah, so so I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's good that he took some responsibility too. Yeah. you know that you know what I what whatever I could have done that I didn't do. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, um, but you know, this is um, it's it's. Gonna be it's gonna be difficult and a very very long yeah. process for them to yeah. mm. talking about some get of the payments this. that they had to get out during, due to cases and such. Oh yeah, uh, the Boston Archdiocese. Oh, the Boston Archdiocese has mortgaged its cathedral and seminary to finance settlements to 542 clergy sex abuse victims, yeah. totaling nearly 90 million dollars. Uh, Miami's diocese paid 9.3 in settlements, 9.3 yeah. million dollars in settlements. Hmm. Um, and uh, the report also explained how diocese is taking steps to prevent further sexual impropriety by clergy, including criminal background checks, installation of a code of conduct, psychological training or psychological testing, and training programs. So, well, so, you know, not soon enough to help the people that it happened to, no, but you know, at least, no. Um, you know. Okay, but uh, so a very sad state of affairs all the way around. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Okay, now on to science for the week. Uh, this is one. Um, a flint object with a striking likeness to a human face. Uh, <laughs> maybe one of the best examples of art by Neanderthal man ever found. Um, the mask, which is dated to be about 35,000 years old, was uh, recovered recently in the, on the banks of the Loire. Lori. Well, probably not Lori. It's French. Yeah. The Lori. L O I R E. <laughs> in France. Uh, it's about 10 centimeters tall and wide and uh, has a bone splinter rammed through a hole, making the rock look as if it has eyes. Oh. Um, so it, they said most likely what happened is this rock already had kind of a, special, uh, a triangular type shape to it. What they did is just flaked off parts of it to give it, you know, a little bit closer look. So, so we have Neanderthal artists is, is what someone exactly. says. Okay. Exactly. They, hmm. they, according to this, this is just one of several examples that they have, right. you know, through the, that they've collected. Um, well, that's I mean, if they can make art by these people, well, that's that's cool. I mean, well, you, know, you would think first off, if you if you can make tools, you know, you can make art. Yeah. But then art is, but though art is actually different though because it's involves abstract, abstract. Yeah, abstract thinking. Yeah, there, yeah. There's no reason to it. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you make an axe, you have a use for that. Yeah. It's a real tool. Yeah. Art is just it's aesthetic values. It's yeah. just yeah. yeah no, it it's kind of useful. exists for itself. You can't bring down a buffalo with a painting. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean that was one that was found, um, and uh, shows clear evidence. Richard said having him worked flakes like uh, flakes have been chipped off the block to make it more face like. Okay. And uh, bone fragment, like say stuck through it to kind of give it that look. Huh. Okay. So. Now uh, it would be interesting to know if this uh, little face. There's, there's, I don't see how there's any way you could tell, but somehow like archaeologists and anthropologists always seem to be able to figure this stuff out. Just oh. wild. You know, these guys can dig up like a spear tip. And you know uh, uh, something that you know was pulled off of an elk, and uh, you know a couple of you know bits of wood, yeah. and they can reconstruct these entire civilizations. <laughs> like whatever, I mean it's great. But a little extrapolation there. It'd be interesting to know if this face was was like someone trying to do a portrait of someone else, like yeah. a real living other Neanderthal yeah. who posed, or so, or uh, yeah, they, or if this is like a representation of a god or a, a figure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that, could, that could be interesting um, to speculate on. They don't have the picture in this article, but I did see yeah. it. Um, if it was a portrait, it wasn't the best one I've ever seen. Well, um, it's probably not, you know. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it definitely has, you know, the, the right look to it. It's definitely, yeah. you know. I mean, Neanderthals went extinct, so they probably didn't have, you know, they, they, they didn't have advanced art along with not having advanced everything else. Yeah. 
<laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty nice. It's not weathering thing. Somebody did this really bad portrait of somebody, <laughs> and it started this massive war between tribes. No, that's what white people Yeah, are. that's it. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but it would be interesting to know because, of course, there has been some speculation. There's, there's two schools of thought, right? There's some people who think that it's possible that Neanderthals had some kind of spiritual or religious beliefs. Yes. Because I, they find... They had burial, burial rites. Well they, well, they, well, they did bury their dead. Yes, but very, I mean, they also had, like, flowers with them and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. And, well, they're thinking that, uh, some people think, well, those are actually grave goods. Yeah. You know, that they put in, like, spears and, and yeah. knives and, and, and stuff. And some people think, no, no, those aren't grave goods. That's just a bunch of stuff that was lying around yeah. that we happened to find yeah. near these bodies. Yeah. And there's no real proof that it's grave goods. But if it were grave goods, right, then that would be evidence of a belief in a sort of an afterlife yes. or some kind of spiritual belief. Because you don't bury somebody with a perfectly good knife, yeah. hunting knife, unless you think he needs it in... Yeah. You know the happy hunting grounds or wherever they go. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that would be that would be uh, you know. But yeah. I don't see how there's any there's any way you could tell. Yeah, typically what the, the thought's always been though that Neanderthal have been so, have been primitive to the point where they have no abstract thought, they have no art, they have none of this, and mm-hmm. so and so it's now we have you know another mm-hmm. example of them going beyond the traditional mm-hmm. you know. Dumb yeah. brutes. There's still some people who you know again. There's 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 one school of thought that thinks that the early uh, uh, Homo sapiens might have, um, you know, yeah. mated, or there was some sort of intermingling there, yeah. bre- you know, uh, interbreeding there. And then there's some people who say, no, there's no genetic evidence for that. There's yeah. nothing in the in the genome that says that. So, still a lot to find out. Yeah. But yeah. One more piece that we have found <laughs> out though. So. Yeah. so it's early Neanderthal like action figure or something. <laughs> but they find like 200 of the same one <laughs> in this little. Not chop arms. Yeah. <laughs> And they just found old Neanderthal comic books in little bags, you know, just <laughs> his little action figures next to his X-Men. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, ah. Next one. We have heard these stories a couple of times. Not too often on the show, though. Ah. Um, who was this guy? Uh, I'm trying to find the name here. It's not even coming up. Uh, he, his has been the most notable face among the Christian gospelers. He has presided over several thousand miracle healings meetings. What? Uh, wherein countless sufferers have had their illness or afflictions ranging from common cold to blindness cured through prayers. And I do like how in this article they they do say miracle healings meetings. <laughs> like countless in. sufferers uh-huh. have had their ills cured. <laughs> um, no bias. Uh-huh. Um, this is Irish reporting. Mm. DGS uh, Deno- Deno- Karen. Hmm. I've, I know. I if he's one of the common ones, I've never heard. I mean, of him. Yeah, never heard of him either. Uh, but there's so yeah. many of these guys Dynic, making Dynic the circuit, Aaron. right? Dynic Aaron. Okay, um, is a big evangelist. He does all the faith healings, brings people up on stage, smacks them upside the head, and now they can walk again. Hmm. Um, it, he didn't smack himself though. <laughs> Um, he has <laughs> Where are you having, going with this? I'm not. I'm <laughs> worried. Okay. He's been having chronic knee problems. Oh. So instead of you know you know hitting himself or something like that, yeah, or, no you know physician heal thyself, praying over right? His knee, right? Yeah, he goes to the top team of doctors that money can buy and gets knee replacement surgery. So. But 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 why didn't he just lay hands why upon his own knee? Why didn't he just lay, lay yeah. hands on himself if it doesn't work that way? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> well, what is his excuse? Then, has, he, has he actually tried to address this? No. You didn't heal yourself. What's no. up with? There's there's nothing in here, and of uh, course nobody bothers to ask them. Well, why didn't this reporter so. call his people up and did he say, "What's his name? Did not return our calls, <laughs> our our, <laughs> our, our, our snotty hard. little calls." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, by a top team of doctors. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, tongues will start wagging over Din, uh, Dine, Dine Karen's it's just, yeah. choice for his own treatment. Perhaps there's a moral to the story. Thou shalt not pray for thyself. So. Well, why not? Wait, Christians pray for themselves all the yeah. time. One, why there's, not? There's and, nothing and in two, the religion that says you can't. another faith healer who's going to obviously do this without as much money and without as much trauma as knee replacement surgery. You, just... you mean go to the competition. Exactly. But then if the competition heals you, he can get out there and say... This guy couldn't even heal himself, so everyone should come to my rallies. Well, return the favor. Who is it that's got that's got the? Uh, oh, the answer, um... so, so you do like a whole Nancy Kerrigan thing where you hire some guy to like wait, lie in wait, and bonk him over the head, and they're like, ah, well, I can return well, the favor now. But who is it that has the cancer then? Um, Falwell or Robertson? Robertson. Yes, who yeah. did who did not eat his own miracle pancake uh, exactly. batter that is supposed to hold off colon cancer? Exactly. Right. So. Right, which he should have so, done. So, yeah, I mean, they could just trade. 
do a duo show and they heal each other and say, see, now it works. <laughs> it's like a WWF, except they're like, <laughs> so I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you missed a spot. Um, well, you know, uh, the, um, of course, now talk about one of the big ones, right? Benny Hinn. Yes. One of the top, uh, so, you know, yeah. you know celebrity, uh, you know, a faith healer types. He has a personal physician. Kind of makes you go, hmm, right? This is a guy who claims. To, this is a guy who claims to have, like, you know, cured AIDS. Yeah. By doing his routine, brought people right? back from the dead. Yeah. Um, you know, they, on his, you see his rallies, and they're like all these lines of yeah. empty wheelchairs that yeah. are presumably people have yeah. gotten out of Crunches and started, all yeah, hung, hung up behind him. And right. Yeah. Yeah. But he has a personal physician, and what is interesting is that, um, you know, he's on TBN all the time. Yeah. Which we have all kinds of fun with, <laughs> and. Uh, on, uh, uh, you know, the, the Crouches who yeah. run TBN, right? Jan Crouch, she yeah. of the big pink hair and the. Yeah. Uh, she uh, was treated earlier this year for colon cancer. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And um, again, went to like. I know, the top doctors. Was in the it Cedar Sinai or something? I mean, one of the big, uh, yeah. you know, cancer treatment centers and did yeah. the chemo and did all the rest of it. Yeah. You know, and just so like, wait a second, why didn't you just pick up the phone? Who is your husband? Was Benny <laughs> or not, was, not your husband? Yeah. Yeah, you know, Benny was out of the country that week or something or what? You know, why? This is a perfect opportunity to prove that this yeah, can be done. Exactly. But they don't care about that because it's you know it's for some the people who believe that these people can do this sort of thing don't really care either. You know, this is all about you know as long as as long as they can go to the rallies. It's to feel good. And the uh, right and and the network can televise these rallies and it brings in the money and all the rest of it. You know, and and brings people into the faith yeah. and into the fold. They don't really care. Yeah. You know, that's really what the function of this all is, yeah. you know. Enough money to hire yeah. some of the top And they can always the say, world. right, they can always say that, um, you know, yes, we could have called Benny or we could have had this done or we could have had that done. But, you know, we prayed and yeah. God wanted us to do the other, <laughs> right, you know. So the, and, and so God doesn't want us to give out the snake oil that we sell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't know. So. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Funny so. This one. You know, if those guys didn't exist, we'd have to invent them. You know, we've just. Uh, this is one of those stories that's kind of funny, kind of not, kind of eh, off off kilter. Uh, U.S. hip hop singer Lauren Hill stunned leading members hmm. of the Roman Catholic Church when she accused them of moral corruption, exploitation, and abuse from the stage during a Christmas concert at the Vatican. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought, I thought the, the Dixie Chicks had a pair. Wow. <laughs> Go Lauren. Uh. Uh, Hill, 28, launched her diatribe in front of an audience of 7,500 guests at a packed Paul VI uh, hall used by Pope John Paul II for indoor public audiences. Uh, I'm not here to celebrate, like you, the birth of Christ, but to ask you why you are not mourning for his death in this place, Hill said, reading from a parish statement. Holy God has witnessed the corruption of your leadership, of the exploitation and abuses, which are minimum that can be said for the clergy. Uh, she added, calling for the hierarchy to repent. Um, Bishop Ooh. Reno Fish... Reno. Um, His uh, name was Reno. Uh, <laughs> he was a bishop. <laughs> he, go, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dis <laughs> Describe the singer's speech as a rash outburst, an uneducated act of showing a lack of respect for the place she was, a guest, and for those who invited her. Now, wait a second. Aren't these the people who, when Cardinal Law, right, was in yeah. of Boston, was in the midst of this whole big mess, yeah. okay, and even, you know, like prominent people in the Catholic laity were saying, please, sir, resign because you're a big embarrassment. And he was even considering it. Yeah. He was considering resigning. And, okay, and the Pope said, don't. Yeah. Said stay in stay in office. Yeah. Said don't resign. So. You know, and you know, we can smooth this over some other way. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, so to say that uh, you know, I mean, take your lumps, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's Mr. it's mm -hmm. perhaps not the best place in the world to do this, but <laughs> Well, it, they they certainly weren't <laughs> expecting it. I mean <laughs> you know. It was uh, slack jaws in the front row. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> if there was like a bit of a rustling to the exits and so, were there were there were there walkouts? Was she, no. Was she or escorted they from don't, the... They don't say anything about that, at least. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, mm. so apparently not. But, but an awkward <laughs> silence yeah, descended I, upon... Sure some, some yeah, some muttering in the front row. Ah. Uh, what the hell does she think she's doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well. So, very interesting. Perhaps not the best time and place to choose such a speech, but... 
And but where else are you going to? Well, you, you can make you can make an etiquette based sort of argument on uh, with the idea that um, okay, you know, these are your hosts and they invited you to do this performance. Exactly. It, it, it's it's kind of surreal that you would have like the Vatican inviting a hip hop singer to do something in this big cathedral in the first place. I know. That's a little interesting. Um, but you know, so you can make the argument. You know, you don't. Uh, you know, get invited to someone's you know yeah. party and, and then crash. insult their place and you know and then say yeah. insulting things to your host. But on the other hand, she kind of saw you know an opportunity to say something where she thought the people were there that it needed to be said and yeah. you know yeah. and uh, you know where are you get, where else are you going to get all of those influential leaders together and yeah you know and tell them and what kind of give them a piece of your mind. So well, yeah, to a certain extent. Wow. Well, you know. Hmm. hmm. All right. And to end on a. Comedic note. Two more stories. Okay. Um, first one. Uh, this is Mr. Kipling in England. Okay. Uh, he does the Mr. Kipling cakes. They're wonderfully good cakes. Huh. Um, but uh, they have pulled an ad uh, recently that view that they had six hundred callers complain about. Oh. Um, an ad opens with a woman called Mary screaming in pain as she gives birth in what appears to be a hospital. <laughs> but as the camera pans back, the shot reveals that she's actually the star of a nativity play. With dozens of people looking on, open mouthed. <laughs> what? <laughs> an audience. An audience. And this member, is an ad for cakes. <laughs> an audience member asked Mr. Kip asked if Mr. Kipling has ever directed a play before, which is met with a reply, "No, but he does make exceedingly good cakes." <laughs> okay. uh, uh, the director is Whatever. something like um, uh. Bernardo or something like that. Apparently, they try and do these influential things to kind of get you to think or something like that. Now, exactly what they're getting you to think about here, I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cloudy on that. Um, but yeah. again, you, you kind of got a question. This is, the, this is the commercial with the second most complaints. The one with the first most complaints was by the same company. Okay. Well, not, not, not Mr. Kipling, but the same director, I guess. Um, <laughs> Rig- what, I don't, I'm not sure I want to hear what that Rig- man. Wrigley's Excite 1 from this year featured a man <laughs> vomiting up a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Which attracted okay. 860 complaints. Uh, <laughs> not too sure exactly what those commercials were. What? This just, but why? they know how to provoke them. And this is in England. <laughs> this is in England. They'll always be in England. <laughs> My goodness. God bless the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's not the kind of thing that makes me hungry to want to eat cake. But <laughs> so, so we actually have like Mary having her virginal virgin birth, apparently on a nativity scene, and and so. and okay, yeah, and this sells me and cake, then, and then yeah, they say you know, but he makes you cakes. <laughs> Not one of the most direct advertising. Yeah, it's not like it, if A then B. I'm not making the. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it like those Geico ads that are all like non sequiturs and what have you. Exactly. I think it's yeah, just something to get your attention, and then get the. Well, it, was, it certainly did get it, people's it would attention. Do that. Yeah, it would do that. So okay. probably not the attention that they wanted, perhaps. <laughs> right. But uh, attention nonetheless. Well. <laughs> so. And final story: uh, the Nation of Islam has a new ally. Oh. And the world quivers with fear. Michael oh. Jackson is the newest member of the Nation of Islam. Um, apparently, oh. his well, it's like the only thing he hasn't joined yet, right? <laughs> I mean, that and some them, right? <laughs> so, um, apparently, his whole legal situation with uh, with the abuse is an, he's just in a complete panic about this. And apparently, it's his brother <laughs> uh-huh. who is also a member of the Nation of Islam. Brought over Farrakhan, mm-hmm. and basically they convinced Jackson that this is a whole uh, racism thing, and so they brought Farrakhan <laughs> in as a bodyguard. Huh. Oh, strange situation going on over there. It yeah. sounds like everybody's kind of vying for his power because the Jackson Five apparently didn't really make any money. Um, they did they had lots of performance stuff like that, but they didn't actually make any money. Well, I mean, they squandered it all on on whatever. That too. Yeah. And so now, you know, the rest of the family is basically living off of him. (sighs) And so everybody's trying to say, you know, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. And, okay. And so affiliating with the Nation of Islam will will do this somehow. Apparently, yeah. Well, because, again, his brother's into it. Uh So it kind of brings him in as, you know, a helper Mm -hmm. and a leader Stuff like that. Well, I hate, I I hate, well, who's, what's his, uh, John Stewart, didn't he say something? I hate to bring this up, but, um. 
you know, shouldn't like Michael Jackson pick a race before he starts complaining <laughs> about racism? <laughs> that wasn't my joke, people. That, I think that that's 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 Daily Show. I promise you, that's where that's from. <laughs> well, he did this earlier, right? When he was when his when this last album flopped, right? Okay. And he went around. He made this big spectacle of himself driving around New York, claiming that his album flopped because his label are run by a bunch of racists. Wow. Yeah, which okay again makes no sense, right? Because I'm a, sure. Is this a new label company that he had? No, he's on. This is like the same label he's always been on. The the one that he's so made a bajillion they, zillion just dollars. Now with. realizing that you know, my God, we could be racist against him or something. Well, I see how it would be racist, right? I mean, it's like, oh, he's not black anymore, so we're going to oh. <laughs> not sell his albums. Is that how? It's, <laughs> no, it makes no sense. But um, you know, and I know he says he has this pigmentation problem, or whatever. But I mean, um, the whole. <sighs> You know, it's just, it, nobody bought it when he tried to make that argument, right? I mean, the reason his last album didn't sell was because it stank, okay? <laughs> and I don't see how, and I don't see how this, you know, affiliating himself with, uh, you know, the Nation of Islam, which is, yeah. again, it's this, you know, radical group. Yeah. And they've come out, they've been anti-Semitic in the past, and, and Michael Jackson himself has been kind of, you know, criticized for being, for making some anti-Semitic sounding statements. Okay. Remember he had like this, he had this weird period where he was like going to this voodoo witch doctor and he like... <laughs> bathed in blood and or something and he had he had wow. the guy yeah he's this guy scammed scammed michael jackson for like you know half a million bucks or something by by agreeing to perform all these michael jackson wow. is the most credulous you know moron i'm sorry when it comes to these you know superstitious beliefs yeah. in the world he'll believe anything he's exactly uh-huh. that dumb okay wow. and so yeah he some guy some voodoo priest scammed him out of like half a million bucks because and and, and he had he had him like he drew up this enemies list yeah I kid you not, which had like people like Steven Spielberg on it or something. <laughs> and he had, you know, and he had the guy perform these little, you know, rituals, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what. <laughs> Voodoo dolls. Yeah, you know, one of his best buddies is, you know, Yuri Geller, that oh, phony really? psychic. Yeah, Michael wow. Jackson, he, yeah, they, they, he hangs out with Yuri Geller, oh, you know, geez. this big phony psychic guy. Yeah. So, he just proved what, like the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's, it just, you know, Michael Jackson is just one of these people who, who is out there making himself vulnerable to all of this BS, yeah, right? And yeah. people are taking advantage of him. And yeah. I think that that's exactly what Nation of Islam is going to do with him here. You know, they're going to yeah. take advantage of the situation, which I think is really going to hurt him because they're, uh, you know, it sounds like he might actually have a good case to get off of this, yeah. this charge, you know, yeah. I mean, there, there are, there are some serious questions yeah. that have been posed. Yeah, I thought it's on an article. I mean, maybe I shouldn't read deeply enough into this. Yeah. An article saying that they had found absolutely no evidence. The police kind of looked into it to a certain extent and found absolutely Well, yeah, well, nothing. he'd already been cleared. So. All right. But, but the point is, though, in, in pertaining to this, you know, to keep it all on topic, right? I mean, it's just Michael Jackson is just this, this willfully superstitious person. Yeah. Yeah. Who will kind of fall into anything? Yeah, yeah. and um, you know this is what's going to happen. You know, so uh, here's, you know, it's like the nation of Islam is probably thinking we got one brother, now we can get another one. You know, one of the Jackson brothers, and now yeah. so, so again, just just opportunism all the way around. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, and that's it. We can screwy. Wow, weird. Well, there's a the phone number, folks, four seven seven two two eight eight, to call us up and and chew us out, give us a piece of your mind. Uh, and so, um, and would like to welcome our studio audience today as well. Thank you for joining us. And a uh, couple of things that I would like to discuss while we are letting the calls rack up. And um, first one is going to be uh, some old business. Uh, I uh, mentioned before the uh, viewer feedback email address, which is tv at atheist-community.org. And that is for people to give us feedback about the show, things we talk about and stuff like that, and hit us with some arguments and, and, and that kind of thing. And uh, last week... Um, there was a letter, an email about the show, um, but it wasn't sent to us through the viewer feedback address. It was sort of it went on our main mailing list that we just okay. discuss amongst ourselves. Okay. And it was like a comment about the show that kind of was part of a discussion thread that was initially about something else. Yeah. Okay. Which I kind of thought was you know a little mousy, but that's you know. Uh, but at any rate, um, the comment was made that you know that one of our you know one of the people in our group and a bunch of friends were sitting around uh, watching the show last week. And you were reading some science news stories, and yes. their attitude was, you know, what are you guys doing reading about science? You know, this is this is this isn't Nova. I think was was what the letter said. This is this is a show about okay. you know whether or not you believe in God or whether you you know whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe in God, and okay. that's what we. And they seemed to think that it was inappropriate to talk about science. And my response was, okay. no, no, no. Okay, there there is a reason why we talk about pretty much you know all the things that we talk about on the program, and the reason we discuss science specifically on the show. And no, this isn't a science show, and neither Ashley nor I are right. scientists by trade, right? But we talk about it because it is germane. Okay. 
it is relevant. Definitely. Yeah. And um, whether a person believes in God or not is not a decision that exists in a complete vacuum, yeah. right? I mean, it, it will have... There are reasons for belief or non-belief. Yeah. And, and once you have made the decision either way, it's going to have ramifications on how you choose to live your life, right? right? To whatever degree. Um, and the reason we talk about science is that, in my view, is that a part of... You know, and, of course, there are a lot of scientists out there who have religious beliefs, and that's fine. I'm not, not talking about that. But my view is that part of the secular life is that uh, is recognizing uh, in science that what you have there is the best and most practical means of making the world a better place. Yeah. Okay? Because it has methods that are proved. You know, you can, <clears throat> you can test things. Uh, you can work stuff out. You can make improvements. You can go back. You can, you can disprove things that don't work. Um, you know, it's all empirical, and it's all about having immediate effects on things, on, on the quality of life yeah. that we have yeah. today. Okay, and, um, you know, and, and uh, as devout as I know a great many people are, right, and it isn't going to be just, you know, praying to gods that, that gives us a cure for cancer or Alzheimer's or, or Parkinson's or that, you know, cures food shortages, right? It's going to be dedicated people applying science, Okay, to real world problems to work on these things. Okay, and the problem is that I think a lot of people don't recognize that, and um, and especially when you have people in the mass media, you know, like uh, well, you've got like you know Larry King and Montel and Oprah and all these people in the mass media who have audiences in millions, right? And they're out constantly out there promoting the message that uh, you know the best thing that you a person can have to get themselves through life is this huge laundry list of you know religious beliefs and yeah. superstitions and what have you. I'm like, well, no, no. I mean, that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, for, from a practical standpoint. So, in, so in my view, that's why we talk about science because it is important in that regard, and people aren't really getting the message. Um, we'll and back it's also. also um, oh, sorry, go ahead. DJ was on the show yeah. a couple months back talking about atheism is more uh, a description of what you don't believe. Mm -hmm. Scientific naturalism is something that he went yeah. into a bit more because that is a that is. A discussion of what you do believe and what you do, mm -hmm. how you do live your life. Approach the world, yeah. Exactly. Just how you approach approach the world. problems. And right. so, scientific, you know, it mm -hmm. kind of enters into that. You mm -hmm. you have to understand the scientific process, know how it works, understand what's going on there, mm -hmm. to be able to use it essentially. Right. So, well, and also, you know, a, a lot of um, criticism that atheists get hit with from from believers uh, has to do with, okay, well, look, religion provides all these people with positive, yeah. you know, things in their life that they can oh, yeah. sort of look, look forward to. And, you know, there, there's the sense of hope, uh, you know, this, exactly. you know, there, there, and of course there are positive aspects Bring to religious belief. Kind of yeah. Stuff. Otherwise it wouldn't be so widespread. Exactly. Right. And atheism is, is criticized because, you know, on the grounds that, well, it just, if it's all about just not believing in these things, then yeah. what does it have to offer that is positive that religion has? And, and my thinking is, well, what about this, right? Yeah. What about this whole um, approach to, you know, let's acquire knowledge and let's expand knowledge and, and yeah. find just, just find more things out about our world and get our hands dirty, yeah. you know, and just really work on, on you know, uh, making the world a better place and making life just a better thing to be, yeah. you know, put up with day to day, which yeah. it can be, you yeah. know, and that's not something that, uh, you know, is, is you know, it, it can only be, you know, partaken if you, if you have just, just these traditional belief systems. Yeah. You know, it's there is the scientific process yeah. that got the world where it is today. Yeah, there is a great deal that is fulfilling about you know just having a secular and perfectly naturalistic yeah. approach to life. You know, um, so that's why we do it uh, because it's germane. And uh, you know, uh, uh, the nonprofits, right? Yeah. <laughs> they talk about politics all the time. Yeah, we don't really talk about politics here on the show. Why do they talk about politics on a big atheism show? Well, because it's germane, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, because there are people out there who are or who are mixing, who are making political decisions that will affect the lives of millions, yeah. based, based upon religious faith. convictions and yeah. right, what have you. So it's again, it's all everything sort of ties into everything else in that regard. So, yeah. so I know we're not, and we encourage everyone to watch Nova. Okay, yeah. it's a great show. <laughs> watch Nova. Watch the Science Channel. You know. Um, there's a discovery science, and I think uh, I know Michael Shermer of Skeptic Magazine is working to to start up a, yet another uh, cable science network. Okay. Um, Excellent. So so that'll be neat. So yeah, watch all that stuff. Find out cool stuff about uh, life and the world and, and everything else. Uh, so there's that. Um, 
Now, also, uh, you know, so the phone lines are lit up, and we're we're busy getting names. But here's is this article in the paper. Um, this is just in today's paper. Uh, uh, big uh, a sort of slugfest going on between uh, uh, people who uh, don't like the fact that Bush has come out and uh, mm. essentially said that Muslims and Christians worship the same God. Yeah. And uh, some people don't have a problem with that, and some people have a very serious problem with that. Um, and it, it seems to me that this is, um, you know, this is one of those kind of philosophical "how many angels can dance on the head of a pen" sort of arguments. <laughs> but it, you know, it just seems it seems to me it's like this is this is this is how one wastes one's time, you know, when one is, yeah. <laughs> has these fundamentalist <laughs> attitudes towards things. Um, because ultimately, right? I mean, to the individual believer, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, uh, I guess it does in the sense that you know, obviously, every believer wants to believe that their God is, the God. is God, and um, you know, looks favorably upon them, and uh, you know, and, and for other people to sort of you know find the right path in life, it's their God and not some other God that yeah. they need to follow to do that. So I understand that, um, but you know, it's 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 interesting. Like, listen to some of this, okay. Um, uh, of course, Islamic leaders have been, uh, you know, sort of, uh, delighted with Bush's response. Well, I understand because you know it's it's politically expedient for Bush also to yeah. to court American oh, Muslims uh, uh, to uh, you know to say these things. But of course, some conservative Christians are not. Um, Richard Land, president of the Southern Baptist Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, that sounds grandiose, <laughs> representing the country's largest Protestant denomination told the publication Baptist Press that, Bu- that Bush is, quote, simply mistaken. There is one God, and his name is Jehovah, and his only begotten son is Jesus Christ of the seed of Abraham and Isaac, whose mother was the Jewish Virgin Mary, Land said. So I'm just laying it all out for you. <laughs> Jesus, our Savior, has made it clear that we must know his Father through faith in him and him alone. Well, okay, first off, that's, the, the guy's already, you know, a little behind the times on his theology because, of course, this whole notion of Mary being a virgin is based upon a mistranslation yes. of the Greek, which is, you know, the, the, the words, um, the, the term young woman, young maid. young maid or young woman was, which I guess would, could, could have been a virgin. Yeah, but You could imply. Yeah, he, you know, young maid, but, um, you know, uh, but the literal, uh, the yeah. Greek says yeah. young woman yeah. was translated to read virgin. So, uh. Yeah, but this is all, um, you know, this, this is just people, you know, wanting, you know, just structuring their beliefs in such a way to where, you know, they, <laughs> what it, what they want it to say, that's what it says. And um, I don't know, it just, it, it's, I just think it's a shame that so much just time, I mean, just so much, so much of the human time pool is, is drained away in these yeah. kinds of arguments. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing here, right? <laughs> well, we're, we're providing the counterpoint, right? Yeah. Um, here's somebody else. Osama bin Laden would probably throw a bomb at me if he heard this, uh, Ahmed said, but the Buddha may be a prophet of Islam, even though Buddhism is not a theistic religion. Yeah, I mean, so that's a stretch. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, religions change with the times. They evolve. Oh, yeah. You know, just, uh, you know, as, 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 as it is necessary, a certain, you know, adaptations. You know, yeah. It's like any sort of living organism. Exactly. It evolves. It adapts to it's, its environment. It's got to adapt to what we yeah. currently know in the world. Yeah. So... so. And of course, one person says, well, like, to speak of the one true way to Pittsburgh is a bit nonsensical. The way to Pittsburgh is the way that gets you there. It's the same with ultimate truth. Well, yeah, that's, but again, that's not well, I don't know that there's any such thing as ultimate truth, for one thing. You know, I know that a Pittsburgh exists. I don't know that this being exists. So, but, and uh, and how, where are you getting these arguments from? Again, if, again mm-hmm. assuming that the Bible is actually you know, something that you can use as a guide... You, it's it's a book of multiple choice. There you can back it up, and it usually is by the fundamentalist saying that the only way is through faith. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever you do in your life is absolutely pointless. It's what you believe when you die that may, that matters. Right, it's a salvation it's by faith and not by faith works alone, yeah, not works, not by works. Right, and so this would imply that you know it's how you live your life. Well, yeah. depends on who you ask. Yeah, well, you know, so, uh, uh, I know that a lot of people in. Um, in the church, and, and particularly, you know, the leaders, and of course, in fundamentalism, uh, they don't like this idea that a lot of people approach religion in, in sort of the buffet religion yeah. manner, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, mainly, I think, because that is sort of a threat to the power base. 
Oh, when you think yeah. about it, yeah. yeah. I mean, because, uh, but uh, yeah, like this one, you can go elsewhere. Yeah, and stop giving your money to this. Uh-huh. One. But, <laughs> but you know, a lot of you know, we we talked a couple shows ago about the nuns, right? The N O N E S, the people on the latest religious survey who identified themselves as nun oh, okay. when it came to like religious yeah. affiliation. And it's helpful to point out, of course, that th- those aren't all atheists. You know, like the oh, people yeah. in the in the you know this this fourteen percent, they're not necessarily all atheists. A few of them are. Some, but a lot of them are people who just, you know, have these kind of vague, you know, they just want to go about it their own way. Yeah. And what they don't like is the um, is the whole institutionalization of religion. Yeah. And uh, you know, now again, I think that you know having vague, airy fairy ideas about you know mystical things is is just as silly, you know, as getting involved in some sort. You know, I mean, it, the time to believe things is when you know the evidence is pretty much incontrovertible. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, you know, it's just it's just interesting that uh, you know something like this can make headlines. You know, it's just uh, when it's when it should be obvious why Bush is doing it in the first place. He's yeah. doing it so that uh, you oh, know, yeah. you know, it's, 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 to to counter all the negative uh, you know publicity from the war in Iraq that this is all yeah. the West going after Muslims and it's yeah. this big crusade, yeah. which he actually used that word before. You know, <laughs> oops. Okay. My so bad. all right, so we got phone callers lined up finally. Um, but interesting article uh, in the uh, the Spaceman about that. Bush's remarks about the nature of a supreme being rekindle ages old arguments. Right. Well, they're ages old because, you know, everybody has a different idea. Yeah. And, um, okay, so who do we have now waiting for us? It's like, uh, okay, uh, starting with, is that Jim? Jim? Hi, you're on the uh, air. Hi. Hey, what's How's up? It? Not much. Uh, I'm sick of people getting offended when the word goddamn is used. Is that truly a bad word? Well, you would have to ask a Christian. Yeah. It doesn't bother us. It, I, that's what I'm trying to say here, man. I'm mm-hmm. just sick of people getting... This is taken as a bad word. It's not. So, <laughs> God <okay. damn. laughs> All right. I mean, don't see the point in that. Who's on line three? Uh, Lisa. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. I was just flipping through the channels, and I've, I've seen you before, but this time I'm, I'm actually, you know... I just want to know a couple of questions. And yes, ma'am. I know we're entitled to believe what we believe in, but I, what is your, um, what do you think about when people have, like, um, let's say they're cancer, they have cancer. I know you've probably heard this question over and over again, but, and then the doctor say, oh, you only have so long to live, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're cured. And the mm-hmm. doctor's like, this is a miracle. What would mm-hmm. you attribute that to? Well, uh, I, I, not being a doctor myself, uh, you know, I could, I, I, I would have to look at the specific case. I mean, it could be any number of things, right? Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, people have very strong immune systems. Sometimes cancers just go into remission. Um, you know, there are there are a lot of people who come down stricken with cancer and who are given three months to live, and they die in three months. Right. right. Uh, so it would seem to me that if. If there is some kind of supernatural element involved or, or some sort of mystical or divine element involved in uh-huh. the people who do get healed, uh-huh. uh, it, would, it would trouble me to think that this was a, a, a divine element that was being really, really picky and deciding you'll live and this other person won't. I don't think that would be fair. I would think that if there were, if there were a God out there uh, healing cancer-stricken people, um, you know, uh, if, 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 as, you know, the, uh, Christianity tells us, he loves us all, mm-hmm. he should, you know, then he should be out there. There should be no cancer. So there can be any number of reasons why people, well, you know, why, why a disease will go into remission. Um, but, you know, you should always remember the people who don't have these miracle cures. Right. And, uh, you know, so it would, I, I'm, I'm a little more, tr- I'm, I would be even more troubled to think that there was a God out there deciding, well, the patient in room 350 gets to live, but all the other patients on the wing don't. I, yeah. I, told, I understand what you're saying. I never thought of it that way. Uh-huh. But <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm thinking, um, well, maybe a person's life is, is like prolonged because they have something that they need to do. I just find it, you know, I mean, in my day, in my everyday occurrence, I do, I see tiny miracles, what I, per- what I perceive as miracles. I know they probably aren't to you, but to me they are. So I, I, I just, I find it hard to believe that, I mean, I'm not, there's no way I'm making fun of you or, or nothing like that, but I mean, surely there has been something in your life that you can actually say, wow, you know, if divine intervention 
<laughs> didn't occur, I wouldn't be here. Uh, well, I, I haven't had a situation specifically like that where, the, where it has provoked me to say that thing. Um, I have had experiences, and I'm sure Ashley has had experiences, where we can say, um, wow, this is a really terrific event in my life, right. and I'm going to, and it's going to be very memorable and meaningful to me mm-hmm. today. But that's what you're doing, right? I mean, this is, right. for example, because, uh, because you're, I assume, a religious individual. Yes. Are you a Christian, ma'am? Yes. Okay, well, so because you're a Christian, right, the way I think that, you know, you, would re- you respond to an event in your life that is special and meaningful and has, uh, you know, that resonates with you at that moment mm-hmm. is you will attach it to your faith and your belief and you will make the connection and you will express yourself mm-hmm. and, and what that event means to you through the, through your beliefs, right? Right. Now we would say, you know, we would just, we would express it differently. We would say, wow, that was, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to remember this night for, 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 you know, the rest of my life, the right. rest of my days. Um, you know, I'm, right. I'm going to remember this act of friendship. Oh. Or uh, this, you know, this uh, this experience, and mm-hmm. and it will be the thing that inspires me in the future, and it would be a, it would be the same thing, right? But it's you attaching meaning to a thing in your life, and that's we, people always do that. That's it's also, true. That's true. It's also yeah. a little disconcerting to me at times. Um, a lot of times, people who are strongly religious don't take enough credit for themselves. I don't think. Um, I've seen a lot of people out there who say that, you know, these good things happen. You know, look, I got the job I wanted. Great. You know, God's looking down on me. You know, I'm being helped out. Dude, you went to college. You put in a lot of work. You did all these things right to get this job. Mm-hmm. You're doing mm-hmm. things right. You're doing things well. Take right. some credit for that. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I mean, if you put all this work in your life, enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there, I mean there, there, obviously, that's got to be tempered a little bit. Well, you don't yeah. want to get like go to your head. You don't want to explode I, your I, head. I, I but understand. Same. <laughs> thing. Still, I'm invincible. <laughs> no. uh. I, I understand what you're saying. You know, mm-hmm. you guys make perfectly good sense. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you really do. But one last question. Sure. What would have to happen, or maybe not have to happen, but what would what what would make you change your belief? I mean, what, at one time did you believe and you quit believing? And what would, you know, or, you know, what would make you believe in God? Okay, because well. If there is a supreme being. Yeah, we get that sort of thing a lot. Um, uh, do you want to start? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, because I'm going to, you know, sort of yeah. outline mine. Um, while I, um, I have never really had a very strong personal belief that there is a God. I, I was mostly of the opinion that I don't really see it. I don't really get it. But apparently everyone else in the world does, so I must mm-hmm. be missing something. Um, as for what it would take for me to believe, um, I would like to say evidence. Um, some sort of actual scientific or logical arguments that could actually be backed up um, with actual real-world evidence for a god. Um, again, they always, they always have, you know, atheists and foxholes or your deathbed conversion. Mm-hmm. Those are very emotional arguments. Um, just said, you know, I'm in a bad position in my life, and so, you know, yeah, I'd really like the idea that, you know, if I die, I get to go to heaven, or there is, you know, some fatherly figure looking out for me, or whatever. Um, I would like to think that I would still have my faculties enough to say, you know, yeah, it's really, it would be nice to believe that, but it ain't true. Uh-huh. So instead, you know, I'm going to work for what I need. Yeah. I would have, I would have to have uh, three questions well, a bunch of questions probably, but I can, three off the top of my head that I would have to have resolved what are they? to get to. Well, first off, I would need to know, um, can the supernatural exist? Can anything exist outside of nature as we understand it? Uh, and I would also need to know w- what exactly a God is. I mean, what is this being that I would be expected to believe in? Well, what is the nature of this being? For example, if, if this being is a supernatural entity, if this being exists outside of nature in such a way that I cannot have the empirical evidence that Ashley said, that you say, and that a lot of atheists say would be very helpful to make it, to, to help us believe. But if that kind of evidence isn't available to us because God is of a supernatural nature, he's outside of nature, then I would need to have an understanding of, okay, exactly what kind of being am I, am I being asked to believe in? Um, and how do I, how do I detect this being? I mean, is this being, uh, you know, is it bigger than a breadbasket? Does it, you know, does it have a, is it alive? Is God alive? If God is alive, 
is God alive in a way that we understand being alive? Like, is, does he have metabolic processes? Does God need to eat? I mean, this all sounds really pedantic, but yeah. it, it's, it's helpful. You know, if, if, if you want to ask me what a cat is, I can explain what a cat is. I have, right. an, I have a comprehension of what that being what that living thing is. So I would need to understand what is meant by a God. And then I would need to, and then once I had that, <laughs> uh, uh, I would need to understand why should I worship this being? Uh, the, the notion of any sort of intelligent living thing worshiping another living thing seems to me to be kind of, you know, just, uh, it, it sort of runs contrary to the whole notion of what, you know, just having dignity, yeah. you know, um, I mean, if, if God is just, for example, a, a, a supernatural entity that has really, really amazing powers, should I worship that being just for that reason? Okay. Should I worship that being just because if I don't worship that being, that being has the power to hurt me or, you know, sentence me to, to hellfire or, or, or do whatever or, or give me some sort of punishment for not doing so? I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, if space aliens landed on the White House lawn and they had... Uh, all the, this incredible technology that we couldn't fathom, right? They, let's say they were immortal. Let's say they had no disease. Let's say they could cure our diseases by, you know, doing the Benny Hinn thing, and, but it really worked, right? <laughs> let's say that, uh, you know, let, um, let's say that they were just a far, so far beyond us in every other, um, you know, in, in every way imaginable that they, they, they were effectively divine. Yeah. Should we worship them just for that? Would it be appropriate to worship them? You know, uh-huh. so I don't, so there are a lot of, really complex philosophical questions that I would need to have, you know, have a really good understanding of before I could make that question. I would be willing to believe in some sort of massive uh, universe creating living entity if I had good evidence for that. But then I would need to know, but now should I call this thing a God? Why should I worship it just because I know it exists and, you know, it has all these powers? You know, a lot of Christians say, well, if God just revealed himself to you, Mm-hmm. That would take your free will away. You would have no choice. You would you would be forced to worship him. You would just be this blind robot going along. Well, and I say no, not not no. Yeah. I I know who the president is. Yeah. Right. That doesn't mean I have to support him. Right. You know, knowing that a god existed, I wouldn't automatically. Okay, well, all right, a god exists. Now, do why do I worship this god? Why do I go to church and bow down and pray to him every day? Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that is kind of long winded, but it, just to give you an idea no, uh, that no. that's that's the extent of mm-hmm. you know this is this is just how differently atheists think about these questions than I think your average believer thinks about them. Well, you know, so. thank you for answering my question, but you know... Sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you too much. Yeah. That's pretty deep. Thinking is one of the I mean, better you, habits we've gotten you, into. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't consider that a liability. I don't think there's anything wrong with thinking too much. No, no, if no. You're there's, thinking there's, there's, sometimes there's, there's nothing wrong with thinking. You know? yeah. I mean, knowledge is power, but the, the, the deal is, is when you, when you think... Too much, you can't see what's in front of you. But you know, I'm not. The, I would disagree with that. But I'm not, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying anything bad. You know, we're, we're mm-hmm. entitled to believe in everything what we believe in. But you know, I've enjoyed talking to you. Enjoy and, having you call. And if you don't mind, what? No. What do you? What, what's that face? I'm just waiting, waiting for you to say what you're going to say. <laughs> I'm just, I just. Just mm-hmm. say I'm going to say a little prayer for the two of you. All and right. You know well, what? you. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask to convert you okay. or, or anything or anything like that. But you know, just just to open well, your mind a little more. Well, ma'am, you, you know? may do that. All right. Okay. All right. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> all right. And we'll be returning well, to report back if anything changes. Yeah. Again, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Uh, okay. So, I took care of that. All right. Who is? Uh, all right. Uh, Larry has been waiting for a long time on line one. Appreciate it. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? We're okay. What's up? I'm um, blessed. I just wanted to, I was just calling to let you know that Jesus is real. That's what because, we hear that a lot. Huh? We we do hear that quite a bit. Yeah, you you hear, but see, let, let me tell you something. See, this is, how, this, this is how I know. God came to save me. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to be out in the world. I used to, I used to cuss. I used to want women and all that stuff like that, but God came in my life and changed me. You don't want women anymore. Huh? <laughs> you don't want women anymore. Why would God not want you to want women? You don't want you to have... God said in the Word that he would be, he would, it'd be better for you. He, he wished that you would be as he was, which is alone. You know what I'm saying? He wished that. But if you can't contain this, better get married in birth. Now, I didn't say that, that I don't like women or nothing like that, but I'm saying that I used to lust women. That's what I'm saying. Ah, I, just, I see. I used to have a whole bunch of women. That's lust. You know, I, I have time. This, this thing is all about salvation. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's, that's why I'm trying to let you know. Right. You, you say salvation is 
say God is not real, how, how can how can God not be real when the Bible, which is six thousand years of perfect history? Oh uh, well, that's you, actually you not quite true. Found, but... <laughs> you you haven't found. You haven't found nothing in the Bible wrong yet. The Bible has... Uh, so have you, have you actually read it, sir? <laughs> no, found nothing in the Bible that's wrong? Huh? We found nothing in the Bible that's wrong. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing in the Bible wrong. Ain't nothing okay. in the Bible wrong. Okay, how about the fact that the Bible cannot even agree upon the circumstances uh, involving Jesus' crucifixion? It cannot agree what his last words were. There are four different... Give me the scriptures. Uh, there Give are four the different... Uh, there Give are four scriptures. different versions of the resurrection. Give me the scriptures. Okay. Where's our, where's our, unfortunately, we're on the bottom of it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play musical scriptures with you. What I'm gonna do is say, no, this no, ain't musical okay. scriptures. Yeah. If, I mean, if, if, okay. if you know, in John, in. okay, I'll just give you, I'll just give you the examples of the resurrection and then you can, you can take it from there. Wow. Wow. All right. Okay. No, give me, give me some of the words. Don't give me okay. no examples. Give me some, I want to hear the scriptures. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, according to, uh, Matthew, mm -hmm. uh, two women turned up at the resurrection. Okay. According to Mark, I think three or four women, three women turned up at the resurrection. Uh, according to uh, Luke, se uh, something like 11, seven or 11, I think it's 11 women, 11 yeah. women turn up at the resurrection. And then according to John, only Mary Magdalene shows up at the resurrection. Uh, okay. And of course, and of course the, uh, the whole chronology of how many angels were there, how many, you know, how many, uh, were, if there were one angel, where there were two angels, one of them was inside the tomb, none of them were inside the tomb, the stone was already rolled away, that it hadn't been rolled away yet. Um, you, you, you know, you the fact is, the fact is, uh, Larry, that there are contradictions within Scripture, okay? Nah, and so anything that contains a contradiction can't be true. No, nah, it, yeah. it can't be true. What, what do you mean it can't be true when the Bible predicted Any, anything, the day, anything that contains, Revelation? Anything well, that contains a contradiction cannot be true. If it says in one passage that there were two people and another there were seven, only one of those statements. Only be one can be right. Yeah, only one or of those statements not, can be true. But you're not you're not even giving me any any accurate proof to stating that. I just you told you what the books. I just told you what the books were and what the stories were they were in. You can you may read them. You, you may read the scriptures for yourself if you like. You didn't, you didn't give me those scriptures though. I told you. Yeah, I, to, I told you. Books. Look, <laughs> I, I told you. I told you what Matthew said. I told you what Mark said. Then I told you okay, what Luke okay, said. Well, and then I told okay, you what John well, said. Well, tell me. Well, tell me. Um, why come? How, how did God change me? Tell me that. Don't tell me it's just a mind state. You don't did. Tell, don't tell me that He just. Yeah. You, you know, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, Larry. We cannot tell you not to believe something that you have decided to believe. That's the nature of belief. Okay, you want to believe that a God has changed you. That that's how believers do their business. Okay, I mean we understand that. And okay, if you don't, okay, and if you don't want that? to not believe that, we can't tell you, you know, we can't make you not believe that. If you don't want to not believe that, that's not what we're here for. Okay. And going okay, back to okay, okay. but but when you make when you make factual when you try to make statements of fact like the Bible contains six thousand years of perfect history yes, it does. that that cannot be that, and that there's nothing in the Bible that's wrong okay that's that wrong. flies in the Ooh. face of actual biblical scholarship okay we've had people on this show who have PhDs I'm, I'm, and who are in advance I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm and, not and who understand the scriptures probably a little bit better than you do and they point out exactly me, how this me, book was written. Me, let me tell you something. All right. Uh, do you even know how the Bible was written? First off, do you know how the Bible was written? Yeah, it was written by many men, but everybody was. The Bible says that everybody that who written the Bible was inspired by God. Well, who says that? The, and the Bible says. The that. Bible says that about itself. In Revelation, you need to check. Okay. It out. So now, you, are, are you aware that when the first New Testament canon was put together in the first century or second second century, revolution was not included in Revelation. I'm sorry, not Revelation. Revelation was not included in the New Testament until the fourth century. So for there were 200 years that the New Testament existed, and the Revelation wasn't even included. It is the last book. It is the last book. Though. It's the last book now, after the year 390, but for 200 years it wasn't the last book. Everything is coming forth that they say it will come forth. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> anyway. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You know, look, you guys, you guys have a belief system, okay, that nothing will shake because that's the nature of fundamentalism. You have decided that you want to believe this and you don't want to not believe it. So, you know, we can't persuade you, you know, with rational arguments. Mm -hmm. but, but if you're going to make statements about what the Bible says and what the Bible doesn't say, you need to double check and make sure that the Bible actually says those things. Yeah. Okay? So anyway, we got to get on to our next caller, but we appreciate your call, and you guys take care, and call us back, right? I mean, if you think we're full of it, call us back and, and straighten us out, all right? You, you take care, man. And also, if you want a list of good, you know, contradictions and everything yeah. in the Bible, they have skepticsannotatedbible.com. Uh -huh. 
that is a whole, it's the entire Bible online, okay. but it's cross-referenced and everything like that. Right. I mean, it, it's got pretty much every contradiction, and there are thousands yeah. of them. But it's not even the notion that there are contradictions in Scripture, which, which yeah. even biblical scholars who are you know, strong oh, Christians yeah. themselves acknowledge are there, yeah. right? It's that, you know, this whole idea, this, this fundamentalist notion that it's perfect history, all right? Yeah. Of course, it's not perfect history, okay? The world was not created 6,000 years ago in a week, yeah. okay? Because, okay, we have, like, Geology and cosmology and astronomy yeah. and you know and and uh, about uh, you know a few hundred different scientific fields yeah. that show us exactly the history of our planet yeah. you know in the physical sense you know so yeah. you know Adam and Eve and apples and snakes you wanted to know why we discussed science on the program uh, you know uh, <laughs> a letter writer who wrote that letter last week this is why okay. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to have a belief in a god. It's one thing to say God changed me. It's one thing to say this, that, or the other. But if you're going to start making factual statements about history that just aren't factual, okay. Uh, Chris has a hey. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I was just wondering, like after that last call, especially, um, mm -hmm. why do you guys have a TV show? Why do Christians have TV shows? Well, yeah, but see, the thing. I mean, okay. First of all, let me just tell you, I'm not. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. a religious person. Okay. And as far as, I really, I mean, it's a personal thing, right? I mean, like, if you think there's a God or whatever, you know, I mean, it irritates me to see Christian TV shows, and it irritates me to see people, you know, these people that come knock on your door and try to persuade mm -hmm. you to follow their faith. And even, you know, friends of mine that I've gotten the arguments over in my house, you know, mm -hmm. that are telling me, you know, you're wrong, this is the way it is, and... I don't really understand, like, I mean... Okay, well, we'll explain yeah. it to you. Yeah. Um, I agree with you in that um, it's best if people kept their religion a personal thing, okay? But the reality of the world we live in is that they don't, okay? And if you're not, you're not a religious person and you don't like people shoving it in your face, the fact that you don't like people shoving it in your face doesn't mean that they won't, okay? I mean, they will do that if that's what they feel like they need to do to win you over. And... Uh, so, you're right, they, there is, there's Christian television, there's something like half a dozen 24-hour-a-day networks out there where they are able to get their message out. So, we have 90 minutes a week where we get, you know, the, the contrary view. Okay, right. and that's what we're doing. We're, we're, ex, we're expressing, we're the only people out there, you know, at least in this, you know, cable TV region, expressing the, the, the opposite view, the oppositional view to what is constantly being bombarded all over the media. So I would love it if, you know, if we lived in a world where everybody just sort of kept their religion to themselves and they had a live and let live attitude and they didn't feel like getting in everyone's faces about it, but they don't. And so, you know, either, either you sit back and let yourself be, you know, bulldozed into the dirt or you stand up and you say, well, I disagree with these beliefs and here's why. Da, 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 da. Right. But I mean, see, I mean, but once again, like, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if I disagree with what these, and you know, like you're saying, you know, you're constantly bombarded the TV shows. I mean, not mm -hmm. just the, you know, just, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, it's in commercials and, mm -hmm. ev you know, it's, I mean, even right now, like, you know, governments all over the world are, you know, you've got Muslim, you've got in this government where, you know, they had the National Day of Prayer mm -hmm. and all that. And the thing is, is if, you know, it's not even with me. It's not like, do I believe in God or don't I believe in God? Because, I mean, that's the problem right there. It's like, I mean, a belief, like, shouldn't you really know, like, what's going on? And if you're, if in your own mind, you know, but, you know, you're, you're positive, you know this, then I don't see why, you know, like, if I agree with you guys, I don't have to go out and, and try to spread the word to people or, Tell them, you know. Well, that's fine. I mean, I, if, am, or, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, if you, well, if you don't, I just don't, don't understand. Like, I mean, really, I mean, I'm not trying to cut you guys down on, but it no. almost, it's almost like turning it into a religion. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, I think that, um, you know, uh, part of living in a free society, right, is that you can have just free and open debate about interesting stuff. Oh, I agree. I mean, I'm not saying you guys mm -hmm. shouldn't have a TV show. Yeah. I just don't really under like you know. For instance, I I watched your show a while mm -hmm. back, and right. you were explaining you know atheism and you know your beliefs to people, and to me, you know, like the way you explained it, even that to me was just like it didn't really. I don't know. It just didn't really. 
it, it, I mean, and you're you're allowed to feel that way. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, like, you said something about uh, you explained it to them that you know there's no proof that there's a God, and that if some proof was, you know, if somebody had proof, then maybe that would change your mind. And you you used, I think you said. You know, elves or something like that. And if somebody said they had an elf in their backyard. Oh, yeah. We've, yeah. Right. Well, the thing, though, is, is that everybody knows that elves are fictitious well, characters well, hang that on. people made up in their head. Hang on. Wait. So, if, if, hang on. Let me stop you right there. Okay. If everybody knows that, how does everybody know that? And why can't we say the same thing about gods? Well, you right? can say the same thing about gods. Okay. But, but that's not what you're saying. You see, the thing is, is that, that, see, that's, my, that's sort of my point is you're saying, that if somebody had proof that there was a God, mm-hmm. I mean, you sound more agnostic than you really do atheist because... Well, I'm both, actually. I mean, because, you know, straight up, I know there's no God. It's like, I, it's not a belief thing, and it's because God, just like elves or hobbits or whatever, mm-hmm. it's a fictitious character in a book that people wrote, you know, human beings mm-hmm. wrote the Bible, mm-hmm. you know? Sure. And, yeah. And there's, you know, and like you're saying, there is no proof, so... Why would you even, you know, entertain the thought that, well, maybe if you could prove it to me, right. they can't prove it. Well, you know, you're, in, a sense, in, a I mean, sense, in a sense, you're right. It's like saying, yeah. prove, well, you know, there was a Snow White, you know? Well, I mean, in a sense, what you're saying actually is, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have, what most people, def- here's, here's probably the best way to put it. Okay, there, there are two approaches that a person can take to atheism, right? And they're called strong atheism and weak atheism, right? Now, uh, as a practical, now, strong atheism is, is when somebody says, like you've just said, you know, I know there's no gods. You know, I know that these are all, you know, fictitious characters made up in stories just like elves. Okay? Right. And you take a very, you know, sort of, um, proactive stance in that, in, in that regard. Um, Probably from a practical matter, I would have to say that that would, that would be, I mean, I am, uh, my conviction is that that is the case, right? Gods are uh, these fictitious creatures that people have come up with in order to explain stuff. Because, like I explained to the lady who called earlier, you know, I would have to be persuaded of a great many things. It's not just, like, oh, here's a piece of evidence. Now I believe. It would be more along the lines of, I'd have to be persuaded that a great many things that go against everything that my experience of life tells me um, in order to, you know, if, in, in the first place, in order to even be sold on this idea, right? I would have to be convinced that there's any such thing as a being that is worthy of worship. Okay, even if I had, be, even if I had evidence that there is this supernatural universe-creating entity, right? Okay, if you want to call that as, that a god, fine. Now, why do I worship this thing? So it's not really that. It, I know it sounds really glib and you know simple when we sit here and we say, ah, oh, well, okay, well, you know, we can change our minds if we get evidence. You know, we're not closed-minded or anything like that. I know it sounds that way, but uh, you know, in point of fact, there really is a lot more to the question than just. You know, it's not just that simple. And that is what we try to illustrate on the show, you know, when we talk to folks. Um, I, 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 the reason, the reason that on this program, and you'll see like a lot of, a lot of atheists will take what's called the weak atheist position, which is, okay, look, I don't, you know, can't prove there isn't one, but, you know, I just don't believe there is one. And since the burden of proof relies on the believer, then I'm just going to say, hey, you know, until I get that kind of proof from believers, I'm not going to believe. That's what's called the weak atheist position. And I think it's sufficient to defend atheism because ultimately it does come down to a burden of proof question. If someone comes to me and says, I have an elf in my yard or there's a God that created the universe, then until they provide the evidence for that claim, I'm just going to choose not to believe. Um, so, so on the show and in discussions with, with theists and believers, I think taking the weak atheist position is, is more than adequate. But, so hopefully that, well, yeah, I hope that answered some Question. Yeah, but, I mean, but I mean, you bring up some worthwhile points, okay? I mean, it's it, you do bring up some worthwhile points. I mean, the whole the whole notion of atheists having TV shows is kind of new, in right. the first place, right? Well, no, I you know it's just like you know earlier I was saying you know like it's irritating to have mm-hmm. you know religion forced into your you know what I mean? All but right. you know honestly, I do understand like the there are good points to religion for people who need it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like. I understand that 
you know, drug addicts and stuff like that, sometimes they can't do it on, you know, they they're, they are doing it on their own, but they need to believe in, like, a higher power or whatever in order yeah. to make it through those times. And I understand that and everything. Yeah. Well, they've been made to think that they need to have that belief in order right. to well, get Well, I mean, honestly, people in this day and age are pretty, I mean, I'm, you know, this might be kind of messed up for me to say, but pretty weak-minded and, you know, I mean, it's sort of, you know, clickish and go along with the crowd time, you know, and, you know, when you are like that weak to think, you know, you know, I would have never been able to get off drugs or mm -hmm. quit drinking or quit beating my wife or whatever without mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. you know, I personally, I under, you know, I wouldn't need that, but I understand that it does mm -hmm. do some good. No, you but a, I mean, like, yeah. there is some, like, there is, there is a positive side to it, and I understand that. But you know, and we do recognize this. We right. do recognize that there are good, good sides to religion. Well, see, well that's what. But you there know, are basically also makes me ask the question, like, you know, why you guys, you know, have to, you know, yeah. tell people okay. about atheism? Okay, because, because there's also just, bad you know, sides. To me, it just doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. Like. If, okay. Hang on, let him I, answer I, you. Let, I, him, I totally, let me answer. Larry, Larry, let him answer. Speech you guys can say and have okay. any TV show you want, whether it's about God or okay, not well, about God. Let me answer the saying, question then. Larry, Larry, for it's, me, it's, it's just kind of weird, and it just seems kind of strange that yeah. you know that you guys would want to. You know, uh -huh. because those people aren't going to change their mind. Okay, so, well, yeah, but we answer, have, so let me answer the question. Let him answer, and then we're going to go on to our next caller, okay? Yeah, yeah. But we appreciate the call, dude. Yeah, we, right. we acknowledge that there are a lot of good things to religion, that people get a lot of strength from it, and, mm -hmm. and that type of thing. There's also a lot of bad things to religion, though. And it does lead to a lot of, you know, bad beliefs, bad ideas on how to run your life, and that type of thing. Now, if you have, essentially, society... If you have any belief that is unchecked and it is not verified, it is not given counter arguments, then typically it's going to grow and become more powerful because they're just going to get braver and braver and be able to have their point out and be able to push that envelope a little bit farther. Uh -huh. Now, it's because in this country that we have a lot of different, I mean, everybody can have a different view out here and get it publicized that we end up being kind of somewhat moderate. As in, you know, we're not, we're not an Islamic nation. You don't have to wear a burqa in this country, or else they will stone you to death. Um, anything, you know, we don't have these runaway ideas because we have lots of different viewpoints. Now, when we're on here, we don't expect anyone to say, wow, those atheists are really bright people. They got it all together, and, you know, I think they're absolutely right. But we do expect them to say that, well, atheists, at least they've thought their stuff through. They're wrong. We think they're wrong completely. But, you know, they've got a couple good points, and we can't, you know, okay, fine, I'll grant we don't, we can't stone them to death. Okay, I'll give you that. And that's what gives us our moderation. That's why we have this country where we don't have, you know, stonings, because we have several viewpoints. So, um, but going back to why we have the show, mostly the short snippet answer that we usually give is education and outreach. Outreach to other atheists so that they can see that, hey, there's other people, other like-minded folk in town. And so they can come down and meet us and just, you know, have a social thing. Um, and also education. A lot of people get their ideas of who an atheist is and what an atheist believes from their preacher. Ah, not a good is, source. <laughs> which is usually going to be a little bit biased. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're out here to say, look, you know, this is, this is what we believe and don't believe. And this is, you know, how we live our life. And, you know, we're just kind of normal people. So, mm. you know, we don't eat babies. We don't, mm. you know, anything like that. So Only with And a lot of people don't, don't know that. They and assume that, you know, atheists are just, you know, these old people that hate everything. And the yummy always. dressing. Yeah. So. With cranberry sauce. So we're normal. Cranberry what sauce. What did you have? Well, I don't, how cranberry sauce dude, got into this, I don't know. Dude, babe, that's him. Babies with cranberry sauce, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only, only way to go, I tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, well, that's, uh. That went on for a bit, but good points raised. And we still have uh, a few minutes into the show, so we have a caller who's been waiting quite a long time. Who's on? Line one. Hi, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Jay? Hello? How you doing, sir? Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm blessed, my Lord, brother. Um, I just, uh, just wanted to uh, say that um, I can only tell about what God has done to me. I, I can't, you know, um, force anything on anybody, and, you know, I can't can't say that that hey you you this and you you that but I can only say what he's done for me. And um I had a situation once where um I was I was terribly ill and, and 
and I'm out of a uh, respiratory area. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could not breathe. My, I, I mean, I was losing air by, by the day. Mm-hmm. And just one day, I, I was just watching TV. And, and the man, he began to preach. And, you know, I always wondered, you know, in my mind, you know, you know like, God, you know, show me that you're real. You know, uh, give me some, something and let me know that you're real, you know. And that man began to, he had stopped preaching. And he pointed to the screen and he said, there's somebody out there dealing with an upper respiratory problem uh-huh. right now. Uh-huh. And he said, to lay your hand on your chest and believe in God for your uh-huh. miracle. And I did just that. And I have been delivered. Wow. God, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm, as I said, I, I'm not here to force anything on anybody. Uh-huh. But all I ask. Is when you're going through that dark night, or that dark problem, whatever it is, after you've done all that you can do, after you've tried any, any and everything that you can try, just try G. Just okay. try. Let me, let me ask you something. And God bless you. All right. Um, well, what I wanted to ask, of course, were a few things. First off, what medication, if any, were you on for this upper respiratory problem? And, um, you know, isn't it interesting that, uh, uh, you know, Pat Robertson or some preacher on TV can say something like, there's someone out there with an upper respiratory problem. Mm. And if you just lay your hands on your chest or on your television, which sometimes they say (laughs) do, and you will have your healing, right? Okay. And uh, who was it that had um, a really funny point about this? Again, I think we're back to Jon Stewart or maybe someone else, right? Saying, okay, uh... No, it was Al Franken. Actually, it was in Al Franken's book. Okay. Okay. Where, um, you know, first off, you know, if a supreme being is really doing these things through these preachers on television, okay, why can't we get a name and address, right? Why can't we say Joe Blow at 123 yeah. Elm Street, yeah. uh, you know, currently has gout and it's really bad. <laughs> and uh, and uh, if all he needs to do or, you know, or he's got, to, you know, pancreatic cancer, yeah. you know, Joe Williams, uh, you know, in, in Poughkeepsie, New York, um, you know, has, uh, you know, an impacted something, yeah. you know. Uh, so I, w- I would expect something a little bit like that from an all-powerful deity, okay? Right. But what if, what if you had a situation, right, where, um, you know, the, the preacher says, so-and-so has an upper respiratory affection, okay? And God is really doing this, okay? But he means someone else. <laughs> and you think it's you. So you're like, oh, I'm healed. <laughs> And then you kill over, <laughs> or uh, or you say something like uh, you have some dis- uh, some sort of uh, diabetic disorder. Yeah. Okay, uh, somebody has like really horrible type, you know, type, two, you know, to stage type, type two diabetes or something. And yeah. and uh, oh yeah, and and someone watching that says, oh, that's me. Yeah. And they say, I'm well, cured. Yeah, I'm Great cured. That chocolate. Cake. And then they go and then they eat something <laughs> and then they kill over and they have from insulin shock, right? Okay. <laughs> so I would I would expect to see you know a little bit more precision from an all powerful. You yeah. know, deity. Yeah. Okay. And, what, and what again, why, why has God not well, done this before? Well, why does he have to wait for Pat Robertson to get okay, You know, please do me. A why favor. does he need a, that no. guy over there? Needs some help. Why does he need television? Why does he need uh, to do it through a television? Yeah. <laughs> what 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 our caller experienced? What he was describing to us, folks, is something called um, confirmation bias, right? Which is when you already have a belief system, okay, in place, telling you that there's a God and He's watching out for me and He's doing all these good things, and then something happens that is good for you. And that appears to reinforce the belief system, then you're going to take that as proof that the belief system is true, okay? It's, you have already reached the conclusion, okay, this is sort of opposite from the scientific method. Instead of gathering the evidence and then reaching a conclusion, you already have the conclusion that you've reached, right? You've adopted the belief in God, yeah. and then when whatever comes up that looks like it reflects positively on that belief, you're going to say, ah, and that proves it. So it's called confirmation bias, and you can read more about it <laughs> at the Skeptic's Dictionary, which is online at skeptic.com. So, uh, look, we are thrilled that our caller got over his upper respiratory system. I suspect that he was probably under a battery of medications and a whole lot of treatment, all of which total took, you know, took their toll on, uh, on his illness. And, you know, and, but, uh, you know, again, this is why we promote science, right, on the program, you know, um, you know, in our culture, what are you going to get? You're going to get people who, you know, will will undergo very successful cancer treatments, yeah. right? They'll, they'll, they'll do it all, and the cancer will go into remission, okay? And in many cases, right, are they going to thank 
you know, the doctors, the doctors. and the 30 years worth of researchers who yeah. did all the, 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 the hard work into figuring out treatments for these illnesses? Yeah. In most cases, no. In most cases, they're going to say, and I, wa- I want to thank my family and my friends for praying for me, and yeah. I want to thank the Lord, and what, you know. Yeah, I want to thank so, the doctors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, okay. Uh, my, uh, line three. Hi, you've been holding a long time. We appreciate it. Hi, guys. Mike, hi. I had a call in response to Larry who wants to know about the uh, different resurrection stories. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he needs to read John chapter 20. Okay, uh, thanks. Where it says Mary Magdalene alone went to the tomb. Uh, right. Matthew chapter 28, where it says uh, Mary Magdalene and another Mary. Mm-hmm. That's Mary, yeah, Jesus' mom, yeah. Uh, Mark uh, chapter 16, where it says Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Salome, right. And then in Luke uh, chapter 24, where it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women. Right. I think and, it's a... uh, there are other differences. In uh, Luke, the tomb was opened, mm-hmm. Matthew, it was closed. In Matthew, an angel was there. In Mark, it was a young man. Mm-hmm. In Luke, it was two men. Yeah. And in John, it was two angels. Right. Uh, I mean, there were just all kinds of uh, discrepancies yeah. in those four accounts. Yeah, and especially in in in, and in John, what you get uh, the the biggest difference is also that to, when Mary turns up alone, right, and the yep. tomb is already opened, and so she panics and runs and goes and gets a couple of disciples, right? I think she gets Simon. And uh, she gets another disciple who's not named, and they go and they check it out, and they're like, "Uh oh, somebody stole the you know the body of Jesus," which is their first thought. And then the two disciples leave, and Mary is still there. And then she turns to look into the tomb, which has been open all this time, and she sees, I think, two. It might just be one. I think I think it's one or two. One or two of the angels inside the tomb. Apparently, they've been there the whole time. Uh, or just turned up, and, yeah. and then that, that's when... But And that's the only version of the resurrection story in which disciples appear. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, the, um, the, whole, and the whole thing about, okay, contradictions in the Bible, stuff like that. Contradictions in the Bible are only a problem for, for fundamentalists who insist upon biblical yeah. literalism, right? A literal interpretation of Scripture, like our two callers earlier, who said, you know, that everything, every word in it's literally true, and it's all accurate history, and what have you. Okay, most Christians don't interpret the Bible literally, so contradictions in the Scripture aren't really that big a problem for them. Right. But if somebody is going to want to come out and say the Bible's perfect, it's got no errors, it's got no mistakes, everything in it's right, you, you can't disprove, well, I mean, you know, that's pretty much, you know, that's a clay pigeon. You know, right. right there, you can just pop them out of the sky. So, I mean, but we appreciate those verses because we we usually have a Bible handy and we didn't have it today. Yeah, I mean, there so. are those contradictions also. I mean, a lot of the moral contradictions where the Bible supports slavery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Bible supports stoning unruly kids to death. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. I love bringing that up to Christians. I discuss it with them and they have, I mean, they, they make up these wild excuses of why that's okay. Uh, and uh, so they, they're basically, I said, well, so you're condoning stoning kids to death. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. well, the funny, the funniest, <laughs> yeah. funniest one I had was uh, somebody backing up the. There were two people. There were ten people. There were five people. or whatever. Um, basically, by saying, "Well, if you say that there were five people and you say that there were ten people, if you take the ten people, there still there were five people there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were five additional people, but there yeah. were five people there. But again, it, so, those those kind those kinds if of you little, have to bend over that far backwards. Well, <laughs> well those kinds of but the, again, those kinds of little discrepancies in detail." In the scripture, right? Yeah. Again, these are only problem. These are only problem for literalists, exactly. Right, yeah. and most people can say, "All right, look, you know, if you've ever played that game telephone or something, yeah. you know, yeah. or, yeah. or what have you, or you can get like nine journalists covering an event, and you'll get some nine different points of view, yeah. and that doesn't mean the event didn't happen. That's true, right? But again, it's, 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 these these kinds of discrepancies are things that you bring up specifically to people who say the Bible's absolutely perfect and free of error, okay? Because it's demonstrably not so. And if you understand anything about, you know, the, the if you study the history of how the Bible was written and you understand all of the different, you know, political points of view that informed it and, and what have you, then uh, it's, it's a much more... Uh, it's a much more complex and, and actually interesting history than the fundamentalists would give it. But we appreciate uh, that input. We really do. Okay, thanks. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, you know something? I do not think that we have time for uh, one more call. We're down to like the last a minute and a half of the program. So uh, okay. we're going to go ahead, sign off today. We appreciate all of our viewers, uh, of course. Uh, a bunch of terrific calls today. Thanks a lot. And we want to, you know, uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to debate these things. Uh, tell us that, uh, you know, if, if you think we're wrong, let us know why. And let's, uh, you know, let's have a discussion because that's why we have this show because it's cool to do that kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, 
Uh, don't forget, we have uh, a Atheist Experience reruns. Uh, the replay show uh, is Tuesday afternoons on this channel at 4.30, same time. And, of course, we are here every uh, live every Sunday at 4.30, except, of course, for this coming Sunday. Uh, that will be a tape rerun as well. Um, let's see. Uh, again, I don't think a, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the usual meetings that we have are probably uh, in the group going to be postponed until the new year. Yeah. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, I think that's just about going to do it. So, uh, Ashley, do you have a sign-off? This is our last show of 2003. So, yep. so we'll be uh, going into the new year next year. That's right. Um, so uh, It'll be exciting, but <laughs> nope, no more news or anything. Uh, nothing like that? Okay, okay. Well, uh, we will leave you with this little thought in the last 30 seconds. Um, uh, something to do uh, the uh, well no I don't have time because it's all the origins of the solstice uh, uh, celebration I wish I could have looked up the verses that they have in the Bible that specifically condemn Christmas though uh, uh, or the tree that right? is, yes it's so funny the Christmas they have, they have tree is a wrong thing verses saying do not do as the heathens do and put uh, gold and tinsel on your trees uh, it's so specific it's funny well okay <laughs> uh oh well, next I guess year we... tune in next year we'll oh. have that well, okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we appreciate you watching. Remember, Theus, we don't hate you. We, we just, just think you're